Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter here with another Star Wars lore video. So today I wanted to cover some content from Alphabet Squadron, the newly released canon book about a starfighter squadron in the post Endor time period. Obviously this is something right up my alley, and although this isn't a full review, I did enjoy the book, and you can listen to it yourself on Audible by getting a free trial at audibletrial.com slash Eckhart's Ladder. So because I want to give you guys some time to read or listen to the book, I'll be holding off covering major lore topics and instead beginning with some interesting world building. So some minor spoilers here, but to be honest, nothing that I wouldn't want to learn before reading the book. Anyway, Alexander Freed's new novel gives a decent amount of world building in an era that I think is extremely important, but right now a little convoluted. One of the key tidbits is the reintroduction of quasi-warlord factions, basically stating that as the Empire fractured, several Imperials drew power towards themselves, creating essentially mini empires throughout the galaxy. Now hopefully this is something that will be further expanded on in the future. Obviously, like in Legends, and when coupled with Operation Cinder, this is one way to explain the Empire's extremely quick downfall, however, the book goes a step further and details the defections of Imperial troopers and how the New Republic dealt with them. First of all, we know that Palpatine's contingency was meant as a fever to remove weakness from the Empire. We see some of that in Star Wars Battlefront 2, as the majority of Inferno squad chooses to leave the Empire and instead defend the worlds that they were needlessly attacking. However, we learn more in Alphabet Squadron. While Imperials could have ignored things like the Death Stars as necessary evil, as the Empire was fracturing around them, things changed. And here's a nice quote. This meant anyone who'd stayed afterwards had made a conscious choice to forget the cost. To forget that fact that preserving the Empire as it had been was a lost cause. To fight on anyway, consequences be damned. Every day after Operation Cinder, the pointlessness of the carnage became clearer. Every day, those remaining inside the Empire were tested anew. Interestingly, the time of defection is held up by Eric Aquell, the main character of the book, or at least one of them, as a sort of indicator of morality. The earlier somebody left the Empire, the more willing they were to observe evil and change. This brings us to Traitor's Remorse, which is essentially a camp for those who have left the Empire. Not political prisoners, but those who voluntarily defected. This camp is described as being extremely remote within the galaxy, and it's very likely that there were dozens, if not hundreds of similar ones on different planets. The camp could hold tens of thousands of people who were technically free to leave at any time, but chose to stay in order to hopefully secure some sort of job with the new Republic and have their crimes or time with the Empire ignored. And this steady stream of Imperials is one of the turning points which allows the New Republic to gain more power. And I know I've touched on this point earlier, but I'd like to read another quote which really emphasizes the degree to which former Imperial loyalists left the government. The Empire tried to destroy them all, not to deny the New Republic access to vital territories, not to thwart insurrectionists, not as part of any meaningful plan to secure the Empire. The surviving admirals had said it was for all of those reasons, yet not one was fully satisfactory. Cinder had been a turning point. Loyal soldiers who had executed whole planets at the Emperor's behest had seen billions of lives snuffed out for no strategic gain and known that the moral calculus had changed. Imperial heroes, unable to stomach the slaughter, had turned on their superiors. This whole idea is playing up an aspect of the Empire that existed in Legends but is arguably more present in canon, and that's the Empire as a morally grey entity. Sure, it's led by an evil person and typically does evil things, but it's largely made up of ordinary, albeit indoctrinated people who see their actions as part of the greater good. So what happened with all of the talent and personnel who left the Empire? Well, many were given 
seven jobs in the New Republic. Alphabet Squadron explains that when someone leaves the Empire, they're given a set of designations, and that's related to risk and value. Those with low risk and high value were given an offer of leniency and redeployed within a week. The book specifically says that they were often shipped out to crew captured Star Destroyers or to join orbital minesweeper teams. Those who were high risk and low value, however, were held at the camp as their futures were decided. Interestingly, Erica explains that the later defectors were seen to have less value and a higher risk because they were more willing to look the other way as the Empire committed these atrocities. She specifically sees a death trooper initiate who failed the medical procedures and rows of stormtroopers entering the camps. Now, it's unclear what their ultimate fates would be, however, life in traitor's remorse was not easy. The New Republic certainly would have been eager to prosecute any of the high-ranking Imperials, especially those who had committed war crimes, but to me it makes sense to use those who are high value value and low risk as soon as possible. And really, I think even if someone is just of medium or low value, say some sort of security agent, a technician, a basic army trooper, the New Republic should certainly find use of them as well, so long as they can do so responsibly. In canon, after Endor, tens of thousands of planets begin to revolt against the Empire. An exceptional amount of assets will be needed to extend the influence of the New Republic. Even Erica who was seen as low value and high risk because she was a fighter pilot within a hardcore Imperial squadron, is tasked for a high risk job. And you know what? This is fairly similar to Legends. The New Republic took any Imperial assets and troopers they could if they could be certain that they had switched allegiances. We see this even in the first chronological post-Endor book, The Truce of Pakura. As the New Republic attempts to shift the power balance, it makes sense that they would rely on not only traditional ship production and the training of soldiers, but defections from what was the largest military force in galactic history. However, that's only my opinion. What do you guys think? Does this new lore from Alphabet Squadron make sense? Does it fit what you imagined from Star Wars Legends? Let me know all of that and more down in the comments. Today's question comes from Grayson, who asks what happened to all of our characters from The Force Unleashed 2? And you know what? We really don't know. We don't know how Vader escaped the clutches of the Rebels. We don't know what happened to Rom Koda, a seemingly powerful Jedi Knight slash Master. We don't know what happened to Starkiller, anything. Ultimately, it was was a plot thread that was left but never picked up before Legends was decanonized. Anyway guys, that is all for today. If you have a question you'd like me to answer in the future, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck. Until next time guys, this has been Eckhart Slider. Be safe, go Raptors, and may the Force be with you.